Robeson was remarkable for many reasons. In the 1920s, the son of a former slave played professional football while studying at Rutgers and Columbia Law School. A brilliant mind and a great athlete, but Robeson is best remembered for his voice. One of the most distinctive in American music, a bass baritone so rich it was compared to deep bells ringing. Old Man River, that old man river, he must know something, but don't say nothing, he just keeps rolling, he keeps on rolling. Through his music, Paul Robeson gave voice to the hardships of the slave experience, suffused with dignity and defiance, and it resonated with workers of all colours during the toughest years of the Great Depression. Robeson performed around the world, packing the great concert halls of Europe and less traditional venues like mine sites, sometimes accompanied by jovially racist newsreel reporters. When you see a miner and a film star together, the husky one's the miner. Well, usually. And before he went away, of course, they asked him to sing. I saw Joe Hill last night, alive as you and me. Says I, but Joel, you're ten years dead. I never died, says he. Robeson's choice of songs often carried a strongly pro-union, pro-worker message. In 1960, he gave an impromptu performance for construction workers at Benelong Point on the site of the Sydney Opera House. But I keep laughing instead of crying. I must keep fighting until I'm dying. And old man river, he'll just keep rolling along. While he was in Australia, Robeson also spoke to the ABC about civil rights and the potential impact of black voters on that year's presidential election. If they ask, is Nixon going to help the Negro people most? Do we think he will? Or Kennedy? Whichever way we decide, will decide who's president of the United States. That's how organized we are. With that I don't know that organized is quite the word I meant. Okay. I meant, <laughs> <laughs> although that ends it, but as of one mind, perhaps. Well, no, no I say that, like today, not. we are of one mind on this. We want our freedom. Yes. We want, let's put it another way. We want to be full citizens, first class, not second class. Now, I'd like to we want to go to schools, everybody else. That's right. He was right. Kennedy courted the black vote and won. But by then, Paul Robeson was a pariah in the country of his birth. Within a year, he would suffer an almost complete physical and mental breakdown, the exact cause of which is still a mystery, steeped in Cold War intrigue. In the late 1940s, Robeson had met with President Harry Truman to demand anti-lynching laws after four African Americans were lynched in Georgia. Truman abruptly ended the meeting when Robeson warned if the government wouldn't protect them, black folks would have to protect themselves. It tapped into white America's fear of black militancy. Two years later, Robeson appeared before a Senate committee looking at a bill demanding all communists register with the government. He'd made no secret of his left-wing views. The former star law student was repeatedly asked, was he a communist? I refuse to answer All the right. question. You, you refuse to answer. You refuse this is, to... This is, this is an invasion of my right of secret ballot, Senator Ferguson. If you want to know whether I am, the Communist Party is a legal party, like the Democratic Party, Republican Party. I'm going to vote pretty soon. If you want to send some government officials to take my ballot away, a secret ballot, my constitutional right, he can see just what I am. I see. Uh, have you a communist card in any communist organization, any state, Mr. Robson? That is, I consider, a part of the other question. Then I refuse to. Yeah, I see. Robeson told senators he agreed with many communist and socialist positions and he defended the Soviet Union, which had been a US ally in the war against fascism until just three years earlier. The proposed law never passed. Two years later, Robeson spoke at a pro-Soviet world peace conference in Paris. The Associated Press quoted the singer as saying, it is unthinkable 
that American Negroes would go to war on behalf of those who have oppressed us for generations against the Soviet Union. The weird thing about that quote is, it was reported by the AP the day before Robeson actually spoke. What he said was, we are determined to fight for peace, we do not wish to fight the Soviet Union. Still, the reported remarks, rather than the actual remarks, created an outcry and the US State Department cancelled Robeson's passport. He was called a traitor, blacklisted, his name was removed from the list of all American football teams. Newsreels and records of Robeson were destroyed. In 1956, he was called before the infamous House Un-American Activities Committee, where he defended his support for communism, invoked his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination, and refused to name others who might be communists. Do you know Ben One Davis? One of my dearest friends, he is as patriotic an American as can be, and you gentlemen are the non-patriot. Just a minute! You are the un-American. The hearing is now adjourned! I think it should be. I've endured all of this that I can! Can I read my statement? No! The meeting is adjourned! It should be! It would be another two years until the US Supreme Court ruled that no American could have their passport stripped from them and Robeson was free to travel and perform around the world again. One of his first stops was in Moscow, where he was greeted as a hero even as he sang gospel songs to an atheist crowd. Did my Lord deliver Daniel, deliver Daniel, deliver Daniel, did my Lord deliver Daniel. Three years later, again in Moscow, something very strange happened to Paul Robeson. During a party in his hotel suite, the singer began acting strangely. He locked himself in a bedroom and tried to take his own life. He survived, only to attempt suicide again three days later. Later still, in London, he suffered panic attacks, paranoia, depression, and again, tried to end his life. Paul Robeson was given electric shock therapy and he was heavily medicated. Later, he was transferred to East Germany for more psychotherapy. The official diagnosis was what was then called manic depression or bipolar disorder, although Robeson's family believed he'd been drugged, initially with high doses of the hallucinogenic LSD by CIA agents at that party in Moscow. Either way, Robeson was a shadow of his former self. Unable to perform, he lived out the final 13 years of his life in seclusion in Harlem and Philadelphia. His support for workers of all races made him a significant progressive and civil rights leader. So, was Paul Robeson a member of the Communist Party? As he repeatedly said, as long as he was loyal to America, the US Constitution guaranteed his right to hold views that some might regard as communist and not to have to disclose it. He was free to vote for whomever he chose. In secret, US government agencies spent years looking but never found evidence that Robeson had joined the Communist Party. As for whether they found other ways to damage him through fake quotes or drugs like LSD, well, we may never know.